It's almost New Year's Eve and that means one thing. Bubbles. But shopping for bubbles can be difficult. Do you want uh, champagne? Prosecco? Cava? Brut? Extra dry? Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? Don't worry. I'm gonna decode champagne in three, two, one! Yeah! Tis the season for bubbly celebrations, and with all the options out there, I thought I'd break down the label so that you can be a better shopper when you buy something to celebrate this New Year's Eve. Now, the things you're gonna see are champagne, prosecco, and cava. And where do those come from? Well, champagne we know comes from the Champagne region in France, otherwise it can't be called champagne. <laughs> prosecco comes from Veneto in Italy, and cava comes from the Catalonia region in Spain. But where they uh, originate is not the only difference. How they get their bubbles is actually different too. All wines undergo one fermentation at least, which turns grape juice into alcohol. But sparkling wines get a secondary fermentation, and that's when that alcohol gets all of its bubbles. Now, champagne and cava get their bubbles in the same way. You make the wine, you put it in a bottle, you add some sugar and some yeast, you cap the bottle, the yeast begins to devour the sugar, and it farts under pressure, thus you have bubbles. Uh, Prosecco, on the other hand, is made a little differently. It undergoes its first and secondary fermentation in a giant vat, which means it gets its bubbles externally, and then it's poured into a bottle and capped. Now that may not sound like a big deal, but it actually changes the flavor of all these things. So Prosecco tends to be lighter, a little less yeasty and sweeter than the other two. And that means it's actually perfect for mixed drinks. It doesn't have as much of a pronounced character. So if you're going for a mixed drink this New Year's Eve, what you want is Prosecco. If on the other hand you want to drink this stuff straight, then you're going to go into Champagne and Cava. Champagne tends to taste a little bit more like toasted butter, and biscuits, it's a little more savory. And Cava shares some of those characteristics, but is a little more citrusy. It's a little brighter and younger than Champagne. Are you following me? Of course, once you've chosen the variety of sparkling wine you want, the decisions aren't done. You still have to actually choose the character of your wine, too. And I know that can be really stressful, but guess what? You're gonna get a drink at the end of all of this. So, for argument's sake, let's say you chose champagne this year. It is New Year's Eve, after all. You're gonna start seeing words like brute and dry and extra dry on the label, and I'm guessing you don't have a clue what that means. But I got you covered. Look at this chart over here. All of those words actually are in direct relation to the amount of sugar left over after that secondary fermentation. What does that mean? It means how sweet is the wine. Now you'll see that the driest thing you can get is something called Brut Natural. And that only allows up to 3 grams per liter of residual sugar. Somewhere in the middle, and this is what I like, I like Brut. That allows up to 12 grams per liter of sugar. But things can get confusing. You'll see that something called extra dry is actually sweeter than Brut. Now, talking about sweet, if you go all the way down to the end of the chart, you'll see that sweet champagnes can have up to 50 grams per liter. And at that point, why aren't you just drinking soda? All right, we're in the home stretch. We've decided we want champagne. We know we want something Brut, which is pretty dry. There's only one more thing that's going to throw you for a loop when you look at the labels. Check out these two. On this side we have Blanc de Noir, and on this side we have Blanc de Blanc. White from black, and white from white. Now that specifically refers to the kind of grapes that are used to make these champagnes. Champagne is traditionally made from three different kinds of grapes. Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier. That's a mix of green and red grapes. Blanc de Blanc is a champagne that's only made from green grapes, normally Chardonnay grapes. Blanc de Noir, white from black, is a champagne that's only made from red-skinned grapes, normally Pinot Noir. All of these are white wines, all of them are delicious. These on the end have a ton of very specific character. I cannot urge you to try them enough. So, what am I drinking this year? There's one last entry into this race. It's a dark horse, it's my favorite. This is Lambrusco. It's a sparkling red. There's only four regions in Italy that can make it uh, to get that uh, special name, of course. It's made in the same way that Prosecco is, which is to say it gets its first and secondary fermentation in a giant vat. It's a ton of fun. There are some on the sweeter side. I definitely prefer a drier one. You wanna check that out. Definitely look for one from the region called Grasparosa di Castelvetro. That's what I've got here. It's pretty dry. It's a ton of fun. It is very unconventional, 
but so am I. So what did you expect? All right? Okay, listen, I hope this has increased your counterintelligence. I hope when you go shopping this year, you know exactly what you want. And uh, I really hope that the next year brings all the great things that you're wishing for. Happy New Year's, have a great time. Cheers, everybody. I hope you found this video helpful. Make sure to share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe. Have questions about ingredients? Leave a comment below and I'll make a future episode of Counterintelligence just for you.